Hi, I'm Christian Herrera, creator and writer of Sidekick for Hire. You can find my stuff on ChristianHerrera.com and Yes That Christian on Twitter and Instagram. And you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by a very talented comic creator. He has created four volumes of this amazing series. Uh, it is, of course, superheroes, which I always love. I love to see new takes on superheroes. And, of course, our guest today is Christian Herrera from Psychic for Hire. How are you doing today, Christian? I'm doing good. I had my coffee, so I'm wide awake, too, So, which is super nice. For those that don't know anything about yourself and of course this comic tell us what sidekick for hire is all about the pitch i've kind of like practiced for <laughs> so long now i feel like i got it down pat it's about a sidekick that gets hired by millionaire vigilantes I like want to be batmans and ironmans but sucks at the job and gets the heroes hurt or worse killed kind of like if robin was bad at his job so. oh you know the concept alone is just hilarious and i've gotten rid of a few a few of the issues here before our interview, which which I loved. I, I thought it was a great take, not only the struggles of being a sidekick, but also the struggles of family life and balancing this yeah. great duality of, of the nature of that particular job. If only we could have, you know, dual identities when it came to our own lives. <laughs> yeah. It's a, having one identity is just struggle enough. So I can only imagine, well, I did imagine having two, so. Then why did you want to create this type of story? Why was it important to you? Yeah, I guess, uh, like, I've always loved superhero comics, I guess, like yourself. Whenever I've gotten to the point where after I was done sharing all the comics I was reading with my friends, I was like, I kind of want to make a comic myself. What do I really want to make? And I decided to go with the first few comics I started reading, which were superhero comics. And I love Nightwing. I love the Teen Titans series. I love all the Robins. Like, anything with sidekicks in it, I, I was a big fan of because it was the closest thing to me in age at the time when I was reading it. And I was like, okay, it'd be cool to actually just make my own superhero story, but I have to kind of make it stick out because the comic industry is very saturated with superhero stories. Yeah, because of that, I was like, okay, what can I do to make a difference? It's like, obviously about sidekick, but I need an extra twist. And I was like, okay, what if he's just like m most people, whenever they first starting out, he's just bad at the job. And there's no like trainer manual. There's no like how to videos or anything like that. So he's just kind of like tripping his way through making this a career of possibly being a superhero in the future. But for right now, he can only afford being a sidekick. Yeah. The selection process for side sidekicks in the, in the big two and, and in other comic um, areas yeah. of, of major publishers um, seem to have their own formula and format. There, there doesn't seem to be that, you know, this is our cookie cutter. This is what we're going to do. You're, you're definitely breaking out of that mold, which is great to see. I love seeing, you know, that you're utilizing um, a wonderful cast of characters. You're utilizing diversity. You're utilizing what you know as, as a reader and as a, as a creator yourself. So I love seeing that. Um, yeah. So early in my comic book career, uh, that's what I am in right now. And I try my best to use things that work, that don't work. And I could just try to tell the best story I can, but I think I'm kind of using things from my surrounding, my friendships with some of my, uh, with some people I know, and I'm using parts of their personality to tell different personalities of stories, but I don't know, I'm kind of just having fun. I wish I could just be like, yeah, there's a reason why for everything. Most of it's just for fun at this point. You know, looking at the world that you built here, you know, you didn't go with the standard, you know, dark city of pseudo New York or whatever, like Gotham, et cetera. You, you went mm -hmm. with, um, it looks like a local, local town type deal that has, uh, its own vibrancy and, and, and culture and, and, uh, cast of characters. When it came to then building this world, you know, what did you draw? Obviously the big two comics made a conscious decision in the very beginning to realize, Hey, this doesn't exist. And our world necessarily it's still like grounded in realism i wanted to kind of create its own city oh there's superheroes all around around already so why not try to uh kind of expand make my own version like a gotham city or metropolis those places don't exist 
So why not just make my own like that and then kind of mess around that way I can, I'm not confined to like certain places and then I could always add more or change some stuff up if I wanted to. But yeah, that was kind of like a conscious decision, decision to kind of make my own universe, but also still be like in America. Like, you know how like Gotham cities in America somewhere, but no one really knows exactly where honestly, like I can't take all the credit because Rick definitely brought it to life. And so did Jimmy and Veronica and even Tobin in some ways with uh, his lettering. I was going to ask about your amazing team that you had when you when you put this together. Let, let's talk about them here. Obviously, having a great team together is is a wonderful place to start from, especially creating you're into volume four of your series now. Who are they and how did you meet up with them? They're actually from all around the world, funny enough. Uh, Rick lives in Brazil, Rick Alves. He's one of the most talented artists I've met. Uh, he was the first person I got in contact with who, uh, through Reddit, actually, there's a subreddit called Comic Book Collabs, which if anyone's starting out comics, that's the best way to kind of meet other like-minded people. He liked the script idea. I had the first issue completely written out and the entire five-issue story outline for him to check out. He loved it. Obviously, he had some stuff that he wanted to do. I was like, yeah, you're the artist. I'd be stupid not to listen to your ideas. <laughs> he and I were kind of co-collaborators on this story for that so Veronica Saracena, who's actually lives in Italy, she was the colorist for the first issue. She unfortunately had to pull away from the next few issues because she's working on some other comic book work, which is, I'm more than happy for her. Don't get me wrong, but uh, she brought like a kind of light levity to the first issue, which was really cool. And then Jimmy joined on for the second, third and fourth issue. And he brought it to life kind of like a more darker version of it. And then Tobin, just being the professional, I feel like he's been on any popular indie comics for the past couple of years. And he's kind of the secret sauce for any comics that I've uh, met. I actually not only ask him for help for lettering, but like just advice, because he's a comic book creator in his own right, a very successful one, I might add. So I can you just fanboy boy about them. But working as a team, though, obviously, you know, you have your ups and your downs, and I'm not saying everything is perfect, but what is the the secret then to working with multiple people on on a project that you're so passionate it's going to sound like a generic answer but communication really for the first issue what i made i definitely wanted to make it the way i wanted to i also have to tuck tell them what i kind of want from it but also be receptive to ideas and notes and things like that from them obviously like the communication part listening back and forth telling where each person is on the project i make sure they all can contact each other as the creator and the writer and kind of just quarterbacking just making sure everybody works together well enough for it just really helps it make at least a really good comic in my opinion so it's a lot of just talking back and forth and listening listening is the important part of the communication part what i did to kind of make the best issue I can. And I feel like every single issue that we make afterwards, it just gets better and better. Learning from your past experiences are always interesting when it comes to yeah. uh, being a writer, uh, being a creative person in general. We, we all learn something. Uh, mm -hmm. Now that you're into issue four, what did you learn between issues one and four that made you a better creative person? Whenever I created the character, Leo, the main character of the story, I had all these backstories and stuff. I was like, obviously stuff you can't put in the comics. As I was writing it out more, I realized that I didn't kind of communicate well enough to like readers, what would make the character be able to connect with the reader. And I started fixing that in issue two, started fixing that and, or I felt like I did a lot better for issue three, telling a better story, in my opinion, from my point of view, I feel like just understanding what colors work for the story, how to tell the proper emotion for each page. Learned a lot from Jimmy from that aspect. Yeah, so like figure out how much dialogue to put into each story. Because the last thing you want is a wall of text on a single page and, you know, away you go. Cause... Exactly. Yeah. I'm not Brian Michael Bendis, so I don't think I can get away with that. I feel like I've learned a lot and I've made, God, like five full comics in the past two years. That's amazing. Along with, yeah, it's been fun, so... And then a few short stuff that I've been working with other people. So what was the first thing that you wrote that made you realize, yes, I could do this as a career? Honestly, I didn't, I didn't know I could make this as a career 
I know other people made comics. I think that started back in like middle school. Like for the longest time, as every kid reads comics, you're like, oh, this is cool Spider-Man. That's awesome. And then at a certain point in your age, you're like, yeah, people make this. That'd be cool. I would like to try it out, see what I can do. And then it wasn't until I made, like I've written before and I did the classic new writer thing where I'd be like, oh yeah, I wrote scripts. Maybe Marvel and DC will knock on my door and give me a job or something like that. And that's never how it works. It wasn't until like I actually had my first full comic made. I actually had Sidekick for Hire made fully colored, printed, lettered, everything. And I was actually selling it to people. I was like, oh, I could, I could do this. It was also a little addicting. So I was like, well, now I have to make a second one. And then after I made the second one, I was like, all right, time to make a third. All right, time to make a fourth. And then just keep making more and more stuff. I think it was honestly after I got like the first issue in my hand and actually sold to somebody, I was like, I could do this. I have to do this at this point. It's not like if I can, it's like, I need to do this. Being a writer that you are here and seeing as this is a successful series because you know you're on a kickstarter campaign you have five days left devs of this particular interview to get it well it's already funded that's beside the point mm -hmm. that's a great accomplishment in itself what did you learn from your first kickstarter campaign to this campaign that you improved upon and what did you maybe stumble upon when it came to your campaigns uh so the first one was very interesting uh time for that because i made the first issue completely self-funded and that's how I started selling it and then whenever it came time to make the second one I was like okay I'll do Kickstarter to kind of help it that way I have two issues in the bag and you'll get twice as much comics from just like starting from number one however I started it March of 2020 Ooh. and yeah so halfway through it was officially announced that the world would be kind of shut down during a pandemic I was like oh cool this is not going well <laughs> Um, and I think I got a little overzealous on like what the goal was going to be, especially for starting out. Cause the goal was a lot higher than I probably should have started at. Uh, but surprisingly, like with the grace of adding an extra week on it, everyone being stuck at home, being stuck on the internet, uh, people are like, oh yeah, I'll support it. Why not? And I, there was partially like half hard work, half luck of it being successful. So I learned that, figure out what you need for your goal. Then by the second Kickstarter, I was a little bit more, I planned it a little bit better. I started marketing a lot better. I uh, started communicating and talking with other creators online. There's a portion of the comic book industry, especially the indie style, that's very supportive. And obviously there's a bad side, but isn't that everywhere, unfortunately. But the part that I feel like I'm, the community that I'm in has been nothing but supportive. They're like, yeah, here's what you need. Here's some tips. Here's what's worked for us. Here's what hasn't. Um, and it's been super nice. So, and then I feel like with the world slowly starting to get a little bit better, we're not exactly where we're at to be like, well, back in 2019 per se, uh, I started being able to go to conventions. Uh, I did my first convention last year. I did three actually, and they were all surprisingly a success for me. And because of that, I started building somewhat of, I guess, like a fan base for the series. And so that helped me before I launched my fourth one. And I started doing a little bit more promotion, stuff like that, while teaming up with other creators, cross promote as well, which has been nice. Who have, so, you, uh, who have you cross promoted with? Tobin, he actually letters for another comic called Side Quest guy on there named Grant uh, and then Tobin's wife, Alaire, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, they made it. It's basically a D&D &D inspired comic uh, with a lot of heart for it. I actually, I really enjoy it. I love it. Um, another guy named Chris Moses, uh, he does the Saturn effect. Uh, he and I have talked to, talked a bunch of times, specifically like swapping notes on conventions and just like a few comic book stories, stuff like that. Like coming on shows like this and just being able to talk to people and sharing my comic, it's never really been for me about making money. It's more just like sharing my comic out there and having people be entertained at the very least. 
And the connections are always great. The human connections, whether it's, it's through social media or whether it's face to face here is always wonderful to see. And, and you, you get to see their excitement. You get to see their, their questions. You get to, well, hear their questions. You get to, you know, just talk about what everyone's passionate about, which is just comics, no matter what the genre is. And it's always wonderful yeah. to see. I, yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that one. I, I kind of live by a certain phrase that I've heard a long time ago, which is you go faster by yourself, but you go further with other people further together. And I love that idea. It also just feels good to kind of help each other out. It feels good to be helped. It feels good to help someone else too. So if I can even do a little bit, like I probably don't have as far of a reach as some of these other people I mentioned, but if I can get either one new reader for them, that's great. I feel like, that, that helps out a lot, especially for us people who are not like contracted by the big comics or like who have like movie scripts and stuff like that. But it's just, it's cool. Like the community, community feels nice, including in the conventions where like during my first one, I did a bunch of different mistakes for my first day, but like the, my neighbors next to me is like, Hey, this might work out better. This would help try changing out your table. Try like just saying hey to people and whatnot. Cause for a while, like I was nervous. I was waiting for people to show up, kind of just sitting down. I don't know if you've been to conventions where oh, yeah. there are some people, like the only way you can get away with that is if you're an artist. Cause like, oh, you can start drawing. As a writer, people are gonna be like, oh, what are you writing? Oh, I'm writing this new sentence. It doesn't really work as well. But I do enjoy talking with people. So I started getting up and when people walked by, I was like, hey, how's it going? seeing something on them is like, oh, you enjoying the convention? Or it's like, oh, that's a cool shirt. Just talking with them. People enjoy that human interaction. That's why like for my website and for my Instagram and Twitter, I always put my name on there because I feel like more people are likely to get the comic if they know the kind of person I am. And if they don't like the kind of person I am, then I'm sorry. Now, you know, you don't want to get my comic. It's very rare that you, you, talk to an actual writer because everyone's so focused on the art everyone's not really focused on the person behind the art the, the person that created mm -hmm. the story itself but from a convention perspective like not many yeah. people go to the the artist and like you said hey i look how i use the sentence i actually use a comma in this area instead of a <laughs> and, you know awesome. yeah. like, and hey i took out the double spaces after that period you didn't notice that but i did it just for you you know see that sentence added it in last second that was me i wrote that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so ridiculous i love it but like i i know perfectly well like i could write a sentence for a panel for comic books it takes me a few seconds it could take me like a minute and the artist it could take them a couple days to finish it so i understand there's a level of work importance that's like the artist is putting so much work and effort in there. That's why I make sure the entire team is fully paid and compensated for all their work. Like I help create this too. Like my name, it says my name and writer. That's something I never got over. And I'm sure for many years to come, it'll be this, the same way, no matter what book you, you actually, whatever your next book you create, whether it's continuation of the series or maybe something new down the road. Yeah. Being a writer that you are, of course, um, language is important, not only from a, well, from a writing perspective, but from a communication perspective as well, too. But where was an early experience where you learned that language had power? I'm not actually totally sure. I always loved. So right now, funny fact is I'm trying to learn Spanish. I'm half Mexican and I feel like I should have learned it by now. Uh, but I've been practicing for like the past month and I was like, oh, this is actually a really beautiful language and trying to communicate with one another. And it goes beyond for me just saying like words and trying to communicate, but there's a specific tone, a specific emotion that you're, while you're saying the words that really help. So I guess, oh man, I, it wasn't until after high school because I wasn't the best student, surprisingly. But I think it was like back in college when like I had a specific professor. I feel like I learned a lot from that class, mostly because the way he communicated with us, not even just like in words, but in tone, like he was trying to understand, he was trying to be helpful. And I think it was at that point, oh God, I wish I could remember his name because he was one of my favorites just because he actually helped me fully understand. And it was a business class of all things too, but the way he communicated, talked with us, it just really kind of helped me like, okay, there's a way of talking with people. There's a way of communicating and just helping people understand while also not talking down to them, 
I think that's the important part too with communicating too. Themes are important in comics, not only for character development, but also for the series you are creating. What themes in this series with any of the volumes spoke to you as a, as a writer and spoke to your readers as well? The theme that I think more readers really enjoy, the fact that my main character, he's trying so hard to be a hero. People understand that. People kind of like that idea, but he also makes mistakes because people do that. And I think that theme really just kind of helps. It's like, man, he just, he screws up. I get it. I screw up too. He's, he has that human connection of trying so hard to be a good person, but sometimes messing up. It's just sometimes to his detriment, he wants to be a hero in the story, as you can tell from the end of the first issue. If you haven't read it, by the way, the first issue is completely free through my Kofi page as well. You can go through my website and there's a link to it. I really wanted people to read it. Just like, hey, this character, he's trying his best. Just sometimes he screws up at something he really wants to be good at. So I think that theme really helped. I, I've been dabbling in themes a little bit. Wonderful from a reader's perspective what they're what they're saying. But as a as a writer, then besides the superhero, so, sorry, sidekick trying to be a superhero and and screwing up, what what other themes did you dive into that really expanded your creativity? So one of them that I did that uh, kind of worked into another comic that I made. Uh, was friendship mostly because he's letting his friends down, just kind of not being around because he's trying so hard to make the story the most important one he can, or trying to make being a hero the most focused he can. And he's letting some of his friends down. So just kind of like finding that balance and making, making sure that he's taking care of those relationships he has with his friends and his family. And that was something I kind of want to dabbled in a little bit more, which honestly, as I was writing it, the big thing for me was as I was writing, it's like, wow, he's kind of being a bad friend. Oh crap. I should probably take some of my friends. Cause I don't know if I'm being a bad friend. And so I started like, even after I wrote like certain scenes in issue three, uh, they were, uh, I texted my friends like, Hey, how are you doing? Sorry. I haven't talked in a while. I've been kind of busy and stuff like that. And they were all super understanding, but like, yeah, I think the friendship part of it too, just with his normal life is really important. That was a big theme that I like to dabble in more. I think it came across well, uh, to be honest. Like I, I loved, you know, the, the family interaction, the friend interactions, and then attempting to do this, to do this as a profession. I mean, you know, you're being pulled in so many different, or he is, Leo is being pulled in so many different directions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the struggle is real. And it's it's amazing to to see, and you've done really well in his progression as as a character. But you've also taken the time, at least from what I've read, to explore these relationships to the point that you want him to succeed no matter what. Mm -hmm. When is he going to actually succeed then? <laughs> uh, I, this is a five issue story, so uh, could be issue four whenever it comes out. Could be the next issue. Uh, I gave him some triumph, some triumph in issue two, but I was like, that's cool, but he's, that's not the whole story. He can't succeed the whole time. Yeah, I, I do have plans without spoiling how the last issue goes for sure. Fair enough. I'll, I'll let you have that. <laughs> I, won't, you. I won't dive too deep. What is your creative kryptonite? Uh, can I say myself? I feel like that's, uh, <laughs> you can. I feel like I'm my biggest uh, hurdle to go over because I feel like a lot of writers say this when they're like, oh yeah, I just got to sit down and write. It's like, yeah, me too. And I could go an hour of writing really well, or I could just have like a couple days ago, I was trying to write and for the life of me, everything that I was putting down on that was typing down and writing just wasn't good in my opinion. It could have been good, but like, I just wasn't feeling it. That's something that's helped me. I feel like become a better writer is just getting one of those composition notebooks and writing one page in it a day, whether it's a script story, a outline, a just journal entry. I could even just write, I don't feel like writing today. I hate this journal so much. And it worked out for me. Like a, just like a hundred pages, one per day, just writing that has really helped me kind of get over my hurdle of myself. There's all self doubt. I feel like for any artistic person, they're always going to have a little self doubt, self doubt that they have to kind of go over. That's just like a free space of bingo. Yeah, it's just something that I've kind of have to work my way through. Anything worth 
working through. Like I love writing comics, but sometimes it could be a little bit of a slog for myself, just trying to do it more often. Struggle of life, the struggle of, you know, a day job versus what you're truly passionate about obviously comes into play as well too. And I think that, um, you know, we have to find a balance in some way, shape or form. At what point are we good enough? Oh boy, that was a deep question. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like I always move the goalposts for myself. It just started like, uh, I think like a few months ago where I actually looked back, I was like, Hey, I've actually done a lot in the past couple of years of trying to make this a career. And took time to soak it in and really appreciate it. But I feel like once I hit a new goalpost, like my first goalpost was like, Hey, make a full comic. Cool. Now sell enough of it to make a second one. All right, cool. Now what do I do? It's like, okay, now I make a full series. All right. Now what now make a different comic and just like my goalpost is just continually moving. So I don't, I don't know. I feel like being satisfied stops me from working for towards something else, but it also, I don't know, man, that's a good question. There's points where you should look back at things and be like, I did a lot. All those small steps equal big steps. Every small thing that I did helped me. And I did what I came out to be. I'm a comic book writer, as even though sometimes it's uncomfortable for me to say that because I still feel like the imposter syndrome. Like uh, I got into a room full of creators and they're gonna look at me as like, hey, you don't belong here and kick me out, but I'm a comic book writer. And I think that's good to say, and that's what I was striving to be. But now it's time to expand that goal. Like I was good enough at that point, but now I got to get be even better. And that's my goal from now on. I feel like every, it's like you're trying, you are good enough, but you know, still work towards something even bigger and better. Once you accomplish something, try out something new. So then what in life is beautiful for you? So I already kind of touched on this about the comic book community, but it's just helping out one another. I think that's obviously the world we live in. There's going to be in the internet, everything just happens so fast and we see all the bad so fast and stuff like that. But the beautiful part of it, it's just seeing one another help each other out. Like there's these people who are helping me out, not because they felt like they needed to, or because they thought they were going to get something out of it, but because they were like, Hey, I want to help you. And that's something that's inspiring and it makes me want to help other people out. I get messages from people who are starting out in comics uh, who are like, hey, how do you break into comics? I'm like, I don't really know, but here's all the information I have that can help you. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Um, and it's not like because I was like, hey, I'll help you out if you buy my comic. It's more just like it's just nice to help somebody strive and succeed at something. So I think that's the beautiful part about it. Just supporting one another. I think that's, I love that idea. That's inspiring for me. That's what helps me keep going. It's true. The, a small act of kindness helps out in the long run here. So I do, yeah. I do understand that. What is the second wisest thing someone has ever said to you that has stuck with you in your career? So there's a comic book colorist uh, named Matt Wilson. He worked for Marvel. He worked for Image. But he, when I went to go talk to him at a convention, he told me that every small step you take doesn't seem like a lot whenever you're first doing it. But when you look back, it's one big step and you can actually see that you're making progress. And he told me I was making progress. This was before I even started going to conventions as a creator. But he's like, you're, look, you already have a script made. You're having the art being made. You're making progress. So look back at that. Doesn't feel like a lot right now, but in a few months, maybe a year, maybe longer, it will be a lot. And I think that was the wisest thing. That was something that stuck with me. Just like, oh yeah, I'm making small steps, like trying to communicate out there. Doesn't feel like a lot at the moment, but when you look back, it's like, oh yeah, that helped out with so much at this point. So I have to give him, give him a shout out for telling me that. And he's such a nice guy and so talented. But is there anything I haven't touched upon that uh, you'd like to showcase those that are watching and listening to this interview? I have a free comic on my website called Prolong that I just released like less than a month ago. 
purposely made it free because it is very different from Sidekick for Hire. Uh, no jokes in it. And it's 20 page short story one issue done. It's something that I wrote when I was really depressed at the beginning of the year that kind of was therapeutic for me. And if people read it and just enjoy it, I mean, that's helpful. But I purposely made it free because I want as many people to read it as possible. And so far, I've gotten really good feedback on it. And I think about seven people have told me they cried while reading it, which I feel bad, but also kind of good because I'm like, yeah, I got an emotional reaction from it. But other than that, yeah, that's a, kind of the big thing I want to, the other big thing I want to promote, which anybody who's back in Sidekick for Hire will be sent a free, like an extra digital PDF of uh, Prolong as well. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? My, honestly, my mother. At the end of the first issue, I did a, like, a, like a thank you for everyone who's helped me. And I made sure to put a big thing on there for my mom. My mom has been my biggest supporter, which I'm forever grateful for that, even though she still calls my comic books funny books. Um, but she's been supporting me in reading comics as a kid. She wants me to do well. Honestly, she's inspired me to, once again, the beautiful part of life is just helping people out. She's always helping other people. Every single one of my friends who have met her has absolutely loved her. I think she's the best person in the world. And if more people were like her, then I feel like, honestly, the world would be a lot better of a place. So I take a lot of my inspiration from my own mother. From a professional perspective, you have created four comic books. You are creating a, a fifth one eventually soon. And I definitely will be picking that up for sure. You have created other comics as well, too. You have a wonderful team around you and you are doing what you are truly passionate about, which is writing comics. So from a professional standpoint, you are successful and your Kickstarter campaign is successful as well. I have to add, do you consider yourself personally successful? At the stage of my life? Yes. Um, and I say that like that, because like I said, I'm for just furthering, moving the goalpost for myself. Um, my whole goal and comic book career is to make my own creator series, possibly get hired by other big publishers so that way I can make more of a living out of this and not have to have a day job. Um, and then once that kind of helps out, continue to make my own creator stuff with other people, just continually working with other ones. So yeah, I feel like everything I've strived to do at this point is a success. Um, has it come with failures? Absolutely. Have I been rejected by other people? Yes. But it's just, I feel like a success overall, which is a good feeling considering like obviously the depression and self-doubt that I have every once in a while, but having a good supportive community with that just really helps me feel good. And also having a successful Kickstarter, it's a good feeling. It helps. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? Oh, it does bother me. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I don't linger on it too long. I'm also kind of a petty person in some ways. Uh, like I specifically, like when I first made my comic, I was applying for a comic book store and they never hired me. They were like, Hey, you got close, but we're going to hire this other person. I was like, all right, fine. I'll make my own comic and you'll just sell my comics. How about that? Um, so I think that's, like, if I have a failure, it's kind of just, I make this voice in my own head that says, oh, you can't do it. And I purposely like, you know what, out of spite, I'm going to do it just to spite you. Even though that I'm sure everyone around me is very supportive. But yeah, that's how I kind of deal with failure. I kind of think of it as like a demon telling me I can't and just me trying to give it the middle finger and doing even better than I thought I could. Not today, inner demon Satan, not today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way, whether it's to be creative as a writer or maybe as a cr person that creates comics or whatever they would like to be creative. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? I guess just continually to create, make things that you want to make, but make things that kind of just have a meaning. Don't just to like make a comic, just for sake of making a comic, do it because you love it. Like I said before, I'm not in comics to make a lot of money. That's not going to, I don't think that's going to happen. But 
I'm making it because I love it. And I think that's something that's really important. Do something that matters to you, but can also help other people. I think that's a good thing to kind of do to inspire other people. I know like my little sister, she is graduating high school soon and she's getting into creating her own clothing style, her own like designs. And she honestly told me, and she was like, yeah, honestly, because you were making comics. I was like, okay, well, I want to find something I'm passionate about. I want to do this. And I was like, that's, that's awesome. In fact, that inspires me to do even better. So I think that's an important thing. Just continually create something that you enjoy and brings joy to other people too. Being passionate about something is a way to, uh, well, not deal with the shit in the world. So I, yeah. I think it's, it's wonderful that you're creating an amazing series. You have a great batch of characters. I really can't wait for the fifth one. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be reading volume three and four. And uh, I, I hope you have a wonderful, you know, success with whatever else you decide to create as well, too. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. And um, I mean, because of people like you, it's, it makes the journey even more fun. So I really appreciate you letting me be on here to talk about, talk about it. And you got some really good questions that threw me off for a second, but no, it made me really think about my own introspective uh, life. So, uh, you know, 13 years of doing this, I have to come up with something uh, interesting or else I'd be bored. <laughs> <laughs> but before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you on the internet? And um, of course your Kickstarter as well, which ends when? I My Kickstarter ends February 3rd. I am on Twitter and Instagram at yes, that Christian, and it's Christian with a K. Uh, they're both the same, so it makes it easier. I will, my website, christianarray.com, has links to all, to get all the comics digitally. I'm in the process of opening up a physical store for people who want shipping after the Kickstarter fulfillment is done. And then, uh, yeah, I'll be going around the United States for right now, trying to do conventions. Uh, as of right now, the ones that I have planned are in Atlanta, which I am from. That one is Atlanta Comic-Con. And then South Carolina Comic-Con, which I believe is in April. But yeah, if there's a convention nearby that would be cool to go to, let me know, please. Like I said, I'm trying to get my, uh, my comics out there for more people to read. Awesome. Good yeah. stuff. Well, much success to you in the future. I definitely want to have you back on, you know, talk about any other works that you happen to be doing, even if it's volume five as well for sidekick for hire. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, you know, you have a great career ahead of you. I love seeing what you're doing and just keep creating and keep being awesome. Thank you so much, man. Like I said, I really appreciate it. This has been awesome. Next time I come on to, I'll make sure I have better internet access. I hate to say it, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. Of course, you can find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which is a little more updated than our website, unfortunately, which is youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.